Hello, welcome back to another adventure of Young CGB in the Arena, where we focus on free-to-play MTG Arena. And where we sit right now today, we've got a quest to play 40 lands and another quest to deal 100 damage. Well, for both of those, I know what I want to do. I want to pull out the big guns. I want to run Mono Blue. So, is there anything here I need to change before I go out there? I still have a rare and mythic, but I'm saving those for a different deck. And if we deal this 100 damage, supposedly I'm going to get a lot of the cards that make this deck a lot better. So, I'm excited to get out there and get it done. Let's go right to battle. Thought about doing an event. I still don't feel like my deck is there. Um, but it should be at the end of this week and at the end of this 100 damage quest. So we have to remember to play lands and deal damage and not concede early. Unless, of course, we can play, da play lands and deal damage quicker elsewhere. Curious Obsession, Trickster, Wind Mage. Well, this is one of the key cards in the deck, so I'm going to hang on to it. But even with a few too many lands, at least we know we're working on a 750 gold quest. And an opt off the top does at least fill the curve. I'm going to save it until the end of my opponent's turn or until after they make a play because sometimes the information helps you decide what you want to keep with your opt. In this case, I want to keep this Wizard's Retort to protect a creature like my Avon Wind Mage that may or may not have a Curious Obsession on it very soon. So that's a pretty easy keep with the opt. And then what do we got, opponent? Seder Enchanter. So this is the one that plays enchantments and draws cards. It's unfortunate our opponent gets to resolve that right away, but that's the way it's going to be. Um, we'll go ahead and get our Trickster online. And lock that down. Then I have to decide whether or not I want to play a Curious Obsession on a creature that does not fly. To start drawing cards right, right now. And I think I'm going to save it for the Wind Mage. The Wind Mage, pretty good card to have an obsession on. But let's start getting damage in with the Trickster. Play out the Wind Mage. What if the opponent plays like an enchantment that shuts it down, though? That would be bad. Perhaps instead I'll play the Siren Storm Tamer this turn. And maybe that will carry a Curious Obsession. That's not the greatest, though. I'm just thinking that I might need to counter something here. This is whenever you cast enchantment, they get the bonus. Well, that is a very good enchantment. We could let it resolve and let the opponent have their creatures in the future with ex like counter the creatures instead. I actually am not terrified of Path of Discovery. It's a lot of mana for something that doesn't have a huge impact on the board. It can be very scary with tokens, but we can counter some of the things that might make it good. All right, so with that draw, we're going to Curious Obsession here and Curious Obsession again and get to work. I prefer not to have the obsessions on the Tamer, but because the Tamer could have protected something else with the obsession, but since we have the counter, I'm willing to take that shot and we got to start things early now that we've seen the Path of Discovery. There's the bonds. And our opponent will draw a card from the enchanter, and we will counter the bonds. And we're going to need to draw another counter. Cross your fingers. Or we're just going to have to be able to deal enough damage. I think that's a pretty aggressive attack by the enchanter. The opponent doesn't want to trade it no matter what, apparently. But they may want to sing a different tune because their life total is quickly going to be in jeopardy. And if they stay alive, they're very good in the long game. They have Path of Discovery. They have a value engine. The main thing that they need to do is just not die. But that could, but that's exactly what we're going to try to do. We could also play out another Courser. But leaving up Spell Pierce, that may still be good enough. If we play the Courser, we can't kill them next turn anyway if they deal with the Storm Tamer. But if they don't deal with the Storm Tamer we, and the Spell Pierce works, we can kill them next turn with Radical Idea plus Wind Mage. So we already have a lethal board. There's no extra reason to commit the Courser. 
The opponent does find the Luminous Bonds. And uh, Spell Pierce won't save it. We could counter the Bonds, but that doesn't actually do anything. They're going to draw the card anyway. So we may as well let it resolve and keep the Siren Storm Tamer's ability to save something else from a... Let me see this. It can't attack or block. So we can still sacrifice our Storm Tamer to save something else from a targeted removal spell. Shana, huh? Oh, that's frustrating. But so far, there aren't that many creatures on the battlefield. Can certainly become a threat quickly, though. All right, and the opponent the opponent got around Spell Pierce just fine. Still attacking. Um, that's a big mistake. Radical Idea can pump up the Avon Wind Mage before the block, or even after the block, as long as it's before damage, to block and kill the Enchanter. That's not cool. For my opponent, anyway. So now I'm deciding whether or not to flash back Radical Idea, and I will. I want to pump up the Wind Mage anyway, and we'll see if we can draw a way to deal with the Shauna and get it out of the way so the Trickster can get in for damage. Nope, we didn't draw that. But we can definitely attack here. Opponent blocking Trickster makes a lot of sense because they're falling very far behind in life. You never want to fall behind in life, kids. Alrighty. Our opponent's at five. They need a big turn. They still have four cards in their hand. We still have a spell pierce, but it can only target a non-creature spell. And the opponent can counter the spell pierce by paying two. So it's... We also have uh, the Storm Tamer, which can sacrifice to save something else. Our opponent has Shalai, which that's pretty good. And another creature. So a pair of creatures, keeping Spell Pierce from being very useful. So what can we do? If we attack with both of these, then our opponent goes to two, and then the Miscloak Herald is lethal between two Miscloak Heralds next turn. So that's what we're going to do. Get them. Suicide dive from the creatures. We're put, hoping our opponent doesn't have Wild Growth Walker or some nasty way to gain life. Yep, the Drew of the Cowl can't block either of these. This flies, and this is unblockable. And will we get there? Will we get there? The moment of truth. War Leader will not gain life this turn. It would next turn. Perhaps that should have been the play instead for our opponent, instead of the Shalai. We know they had it in their hand. But I guess if that case, they would have just been dead. So they did need the Shalai. So that makes sense. All right, combat. Finish him. With exactly lethal. If there's something that uh, can be frustrating about the blue deck, it's that it does... Uh, it does dance on a razor's edge. The victories are usually very close. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. No cure, obsession, no Jin. But a Herald into a couple of Essence Scatters. We'll try it. I'm curious if this is going to do any good. Let the pain begin. You only have 19 turns to win. That, of course, is supposed to be funny. Nobody needs 19 turns to win. All right, Black Mana. I don't know what the two drop could be that I'm scared of. So I'm going to play another Herald instead of holding up Essence Scatter here. Getting worried about Golden Demise that I'm playing a full-on control deck, which is very hard to play against when your counters are Essence Scatter. A Thoughtbound Phantasm. Okay, well, we got a long time before we worry about that. So, what creature would my opponent play here? I think what I have to save the Scatters for are, like, Doom Whisperer. And in the meantime, I think I've just got to keep the pressure very high. So I'm going to keep playing out my threats. We got a bug. 
Do we have a surveil? Hmm. What do you suppose is one mana that is holding up? Anyway, now that we have another counter, though, we're moving. We're going to counter surveil cards. We're going to counter creatures. It's going to be great. There's a block. What's the play? Is it fungal infection? Oh, man. I would blow out a fungal infection here. Dazzling lights. Yeah. Counter. Feels weird to counter a Dazzling Lights, but in this case, we also get to kill the Spy Bug and prevent a Surveil. That's pretty good. Unfortunately, it takes down our Essence Scatter Shields. Dazzling Lights is a pretty fun little card. Uh, one mana for a minus three, minus O, oh, and a Surveil two. Might be better than you think it is, but probably only for certain matchups. Matchups where the, um, matchups where the minus three, minus O oh can be very relevant such as matchups with a lot of attacking or blocking, like this one. Alright, now the spy bug's a little bigger. Lazav is here. Hmm, the trickster. This is awkward because I both want to keep my opponent from playing things, but they're surveil, so I don't know if they're going to have more creatures. I feel like they're going to be playing spells... But I think I should just hold up for at least a turn. I don't know if my opponent would be brave enough to block the Wind Mage because any spell would make it kill the Spy Bug. So I'm going to take a chance that my opponent is not that brave. It's just a lot to ask, so I don't think they will. And they don't block, even though it's definitely a bluff. And I think that that was just a rock solid when to bluff right there. Oh boy. All right. Blood operative. Are they going to pay three life to get it back? No, they will not. Or maybe they will. Let's see. That would be nice. Do it. Do it. Nope. <laughs> no such luck. All right, this is up to a 4-4. Lazev can become a flyer, which might be very important. But there's a Night Veil Sprite. That we can counter. Do we? Should we counter it? Instead, we could Trickster here. But that's not that good. I'm going to counter it. Does our opponent have another Dazzling Lights? Lazav does hold priority pretty much at all times, so it's probably just a Lazav trigger that we're sitting on. Our opponent should have turned Lazav into a Thoughtbound Phantasm, though, so that we get a plus one, plus one counter from the Discovery. But maybe they didn't know how their turn would play out. Maybe the Discovery led to this, and they wanted to be open to other options. Okay. I think I do another turn where I hold up Trickster and Scatter and figure out what to deal with. We can still play the Herald. And right now the Heralds are trying to get us through. Every turn that we can buy is probably a good, a good one. The opponent is growing their creatures quickly. This is a 5-5 five, five with one more Surveil trigger. Let's hope that they try to get it off a creature. We could also, in response, make it lose an ability. All right, turn it into the Phantasm, which means they're going to go for a Surveil. Barrier to Bones, it's a creature. Let's counter it and hope. Hope they don't have another. What's your last card? Is it another surveil creature? Another surveil card to make this into a very scary race? It is not. And this means we can now play Trickster 
tap the spy bug, get our opponent to two, facing a wealth of unblockable little fishies. The opponent could have traded turn Lazav into a 1-1 flyer to chump block. I don't know if I would have done that or not. That's a pretty tough call. Depends how bad you think you need a chump block, but here it is. Our opponent only has one turn. We're still at 20, and they're facing three unblockable heralds at two life. Creeping chill. That will put them up to five. They can block one of these. They're not... Yeah, they're dead, unfortunately. Well, they could have turned Lazav into the flyer to live one more turn and trade with the freebooter, but would be a rough situation to get out of for sure. They'd need to like draw a Doom Whisperer and surveil exactly into multiple creeping chills, which is asking a lot. Hey, another pack, some gold. We're halfway to 100 damage. Let's keep it coming. Didn't play a lot of lands that turn. That quest might take a while for a little blue deck. Or at least we hope it does. We never want to have that many lands. <laughs> but the idea that we could unlock a bunch of those cards we're waiting on in the pirate deck, as were mentioned in the comments a while back. Apparently a bunch of the cards that I want for this deck are in a pirate deck that I didn't earn before, and I can get them if I do the 100 damage quest, is what the comments of the YouTube are saying. We got two Curious Obsessions, so I feel like I have to keep it, since my deck is very much all about Curious Obsession. We also have an Essence Scatter and Radical Idea to try to find good cards to put them on, like Aven Wind Mage. I'm probably not jamming a trickster here, but we'll see. Here comes a pyromancer. I feel like I should just counter this. It's far from a great creature, but it is a wizard, which lets wizard's lightning happen. And it does auto damage. Hmm. I'll play the courser. It might get Chain World. That would be really nasty. But if it doesn't, the Obsessions might start kicking in. Let's see what happens. Oh, a Firebrand is another nasty thing that can happen. Okay. But so far, our opponent has a long way to go to try to kill us. Another land. Now we can play the Wind Mage, which I think is right. I would love to get the Obsessions on the Wind Mage if it lives. Mm-hmm. Another Pyro. So many Pyros. If the opponent doesn't attack, though, we're doing good. All right, we're good. Our opponent doesn't have a way to kill this yet. Let's load it up. I think I'll just go with one. Yeah, I can go with one for now and hold up Trickster and Radical Idea, which both might save the Wind Mage. All right, we drew another land, and, um, well, we could. Now I wish I had played this, but I think it was a little too risky to bank on always drawing another land. But I'm going to play it now. That way it's a 4-4. If my opponent draws a Lightning Bolt, it's too big. The Steamkin... Okay. Let's flash in the trickster. We'll tap the steamkin and we'll get a block on the instigator. So we can start preventing some damage, but we have to keep attacking with our wind mage. Do I want to play any of those now to do more damage? If we do an extra damage this turn, we can do seven. But I don't see how we get to 10 the next turn. One, two... We'd have to have another spell. It's it's legitimate to think we could find it off the obsessions, but all our opponent would have to do is save a blocker. But we have a blink of an eye. So yes, an extra damage could really help this turn. It is possible we could kill them next turn with the right draws. That's probably a good one. The opponent's probably like, I'm supposed to be the beatdown. What is this? Red versus blue, and blue is the beatdown? What is going on? And we'll hold the archaeologist because the trickster is just a better flash play. 
Risk factor, sure. Just thinking if there's anything else I want to do with this, but I'm pretty sure I'm just going to resolve. And if you decline, your opponent draws three cards, so I'll take the damage. Going into attacks, I think we play the trickster, but let's see what our opponent wants to attack with, actually because the trickster could just win the game. All right, that's one, two, three, four, five. I think we let this go. What would our opponent have to have? A wizard's lightning is the best thing they could have. All right, my turn. We'll play another trickster. Untap, so that's eight. We just need two spells and we have it. So here is nine. and bounce you. That should be 10. So yeah, the lethal math um, and using the radical idea main phase last turn to do an extra damage works out and we win a tight race with the red deck. So yeah, look for that extra damage. Holy cow. It played a little bit against my instinct to radical idea main phase for one point of damage against red and not be the control, but be the beatdown instead. But that is an example of when you have to find it and do things that don't always seem correct to you. Some people out there were probably howling that it, obviously, you definitely do that. But those are the players who probably play blue tempo or beatdownish a lot, whereas I have to pivot between that control, mid-range combo, and everything else. Think it through, that's the lesson, think it through. Hmm, well, we got our Jin, and we got some counters. I think I can keep this. We've been fed some keepable hands today. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Keep it coming. I like it like this. So, Demir, are we going to play another super surveil kind of thing? Kite Sail Freebooter. Nasty. Let's see what the opponent takes away. Now that they see our hand and all of our shenanigans. Blink of an eye. That's interesting. Interesting take. Hmm, do I leave up an essence scatter here? What's the three drop I'm scared of? I guess there are a few things I'd be scared of, and since I drew an opt, it's not like I'm doing nothing with my turn if the opponent strands my counter spell that they know about. Man, would a Merfolk Trickster be good against a Kite Sail Freebooter? No Shin Rain. Hmm. Interesting card. Do I want to spell pierce it? Or do I want to save that to protect my Jin? I feel like Cast Down doesn't care about Spell Pierce. Let me opt and have a look at my top card. That might help. Not a land, please. Our opponent also played this Notion Rain right into a Spell Pierce they knew about. That's really bizarre to me. But the opponent must have an answer to this. Still, I feel like going for it has got to be where we what we do i don't think we're doing enough if we don't but maybe i'm not supposed to go for it right there maybe i'm supposed to wait try to draw a dive down nightvale predator okay that's annoying flying death touch and hexproof that's pretty nasty but hey there's an unblockable let's do that so we can't really attack with our Jin. the predator can kill it with its death touchness Karn? The hell? What is I this? I will fight for my friends. Ooh. I guess you get an essence scatter. Her opponent with proper mythics in their deck. Alright. Second gin. Well, that's good, and we can get it under the essence scatter right now. Let's pressure the Karn. 
opponent will, I'm sure, block with the Predator. My retribution will be swift. But we can play second Jin before the Essence Scatter comes online. And we'll see if the opponent has a kill spell or another Predator. Both would be totally not surprising that they would have those here. Trying going up. Doesn't want the Thought Erasure. Oh my. I gotta give you the Thief of Sanity. Really? Well, at least I can water knot it to the ground. All right. I could really use an island. Oh well. So there are a few other things we can do. Like I really want to water knot the thief, but I really need to essence scatter the predator if Karn goes to get it. But I think water knotting the thief takes priority. The opponent finding our best cards off the top is pretty mean. Ooh, okay. Well now I can blink the thief. Please stop. If a predator resolves, that's a really bad thing. So we'd have to hold up Essence Scatter for that. And we have a radical idea to go with it. But what about Thief hitting us? Is that terrible? Is that the worst thing? I know some people would say yes. But I'm not convinced. Ah, uh, but blinking, it's probably a pretty good play. All right, all right. And our opponent knows about the blink of the eye, too. Maybe we can get a better idea of what to do when our opponent makes their decision with this Karn. We're on the end step. They're thinking about something. You're going to minus Karn to get some of those cards? Yes. What is the target? Your patience is rewarded. The Predator. Nope. Thought Erasure. Nasty. Um, I think I'll just try to blink with Kicker and get ahead on cards. I think the opponent's really likely to take the Essence Scatter here. Let's see what happens. It's an interesting spot. That's for sure. All right, found the land. I think you take the essence scatter and then what? Well, they can't block to, to keep my, unless they have another Night Veil Predator, like playing Thief of Sandy and blocking won't work. I have the water knot. Hmm, well, they're going to take essence scatter, but I think I worked myself into an okay spot unless they have another predator right now. What did you put in the graveyard? A Dark Blade agent. Oh god, they do have another predator right now. How frustrating. So, I think I keep my Tempest in because at least it can block the Thief of Sanity and hold that back. Um, let's try a Radical... If we Radical Idea into a Curious Obsession, I guess that's good, but it's more likely we can chart a course into something. This is pretty rough. But we need more attackers to pressure this Karn. Why does it say end? Okay, it just lagged up a bit. I'm glad I hesitated a minute. That burns. That burns. Oh well, we got that land quest. I guess they know. I guess they know. What's down there? More predators. What was lost is now returned. Good card. I guess you run all I guess you run as many as you can get in this deck. Mm, I can't find a one mana way to deal with this, so yeah, let it be. Yeah, I can't if I block. 
The Tempest Jin dies. Alright, need a Curious Obsession. That would make a huge difference in the game here. It's also a window to resolve some creatures. Another Merfolk. Hmm. And another Merfolk. Yeah, I gotta resolve my creatures while I can. I do not feel pain. And we'll lock you down while we can. Our opponent might play other counter spells. But we're down to just a couple lands. Our opponent has a Planeswalker, two things we can't interact with at all, and at least an Essence Scatter in hand. Probably other good cards. We are not favored. Are you certain of your decision? Congratulations on your... You have... Doesn't look like it matters, so I'll give, him... I'll give you the Watery Grave. Treasure map. More grindy stuff. Not cool. Not cool. Let's see if we can draw something here. Here's Obsession. Would be nice. Okay, another Jin. I don't think my opponent has a removal spell. I think I'd have seen it. But we'll see. Maybe they were playing me for the fool. You are only hurt. You are acting unwisely. So our opponent has the essence scatter. The Jin would just die. It's just the truth. And a Jin on the board is still holding back this because we can attack for a lot more. So, a little patience. Maybe we can draw some counter spells of our own. But right now, it's just a, a flood fest on both sides, a little bit. I think my opponent has better ways to use the mana. Come on, Curious Obsession, where are you? Where are you? They put it on the bottom, that's always a good sign. You wanna see that. When they leave it on top, you know you've got some serious concern. Okie dokie. We have a dive down to protect it. But if it's a counter spell, there's nothing we can do. There's the Necotic Wound, three creatures in the graveyard, so we do have to play this. And let's see what your last card is. Does it make a difference? Okay. They get to search for a card. Ugh. Well, if it's a if it costs three mana or less, if it costs three mana or more, I mean, we get to resolve our Jin. And it, it, okay, weird. That's the card you pick? I guess you don't have another necrotic wound. Let's go. Oh, then they flash it in before end step two. That's a big mistake because this is gonna let me resolve the Jin. I think that they just made a big error. I'll hold this one back. Just to let them think about what's in my hand. But there. Now the Predators can't really get in there. Oh! Okay. It doesn't kill this Herald, though. This crucial little Herald who's hanging on for dear life. Our opponent surveils. Did they put these in the graveyard? I think they did. They flipped their treasure map. I think they scribed to the bottom. I didn't see. I need to look closer. 
the predators can't attack now. They really can't. Or the Jinns will kill my opponent. All right, come on, cards. Come on, little Herald. You can do this. There you go. Play the Wind Mage. That can be countered by the Essence Scatter. But at least we got it done. I'm not going to fight over that. I'm only going to counter things to protect the Herald. And I am going to hold on to this in case the opponent has something that just makes me discard a card. Like a rat. I don't know what. But there's a lot of unpredictable going on here. And now they're drawing two cards a turn, too. This one's going to be rough. Mm, no blocks. That's interesting. Interesting to take those shields down. I will counter you. What else you got? I mean, you only pulled all four predators. That's not good enough. I mean, unless I'm missing something. I think our opponent ran out of patience and they're gonna pay. Mmm. That was a good duel. Good, good game, opponent, if you're out there. That last little breakdown, attacking with the both Predators, though, assuming that nothing could happen to the fourth Predator they played, I think that was a mistake. There you go. Auras of Majesty, Strength in Numbers, Walk the Plank, Jungle Secrets, Chaos, and Mayhem, the five decks that uh, we've all talked about. Um, people have talked about on the internet so much of being mad that they couldn't win those five decks back when you could only win a couple. Let's have a look at what we added to our, to our collection. What are the sick, sick rares? I mean, more lightning strikes isn't bad. A Sunwing, eh. Mentor of the Meek, it's okay. Militia Buclers are really good to have. Good little value, guys. War Leaders are good. Not Captivating Crew, though. Heroic Reinforcements is good to have. Siege Gang's good to have, and of course, the All-Star, the Rare Land. And uh, I think I've looked at this dinosaur deck before, but it's hard to remember which account it was on. It wouldn't be this one, but I see a Carnage Tyrant on the cover. That's a good card. Goreclaw, eh, might still have its moments. We already had a bunch of Monster Saurs. Itali, sweet. Carnage Tyrant, there it is. Big ol' Mythic. Block of Worm, excellent. Banefires, Rootbound Craig. I do think I got this already did things not go in order yeah they put some of them up here jungle secrets of course a merfolk deck the the deck that everybody complains about it's easy to upgrade it's not many rares uh, all you need are more cumenas and more deep root champions to have a pretty decent merfolk deck and a good old hinterland harbor but yeah merfolk deck is probably one of the stronger ones right out of the box um or as a majesty this, I think I played against earlier today. Thorn Lieutenant's a really good rare. Can go in almost any green deck that likes creatures. And History of Benalia is an excellent mythic. So consider yourself lucky to have a History of Benalia in your life. Shalai. Yep, lands are down there. Chaos and Mayhem. I see a Rekindling Phoenix. That is indeed a win. Excellent card. And then the rest of this is like kind of a sacrifice deck. Yeah, I've played against this a few times. I always wondered what was going on. Makeshift Munitions is a card you should probably craft if you want to play this deck. It's so much better in this deck than a lot of the other things. And a Dragon Skull Summit. But probably the one I'm most excited about, the Graveyard Bash with Walk the Plank, getting us three more Siren Storm Tamers, two more Charter Courses, Departed Deckhand, which is another good unblockable, but you can't put your Curious Obsession on it. Um, Exclusion Mages, those go in the deck. Uh, or can go in the deck. Dreamcaller Siren can go in the deck. Siren Reaver isn't the worst thing. Yeah, it's not the best thing either. Hostage Taker, though, is a fun rare. Demon Lord is a fun mythic. Drown Catacomb. So, let's do some quick upgrades and then we'll call it a video for today. So, we got... I don't think we got more dive downs. Nope. Um, there's our Storm Tamers, though. All the way up to four. That's wonderful. For Charter Course, I think we go up to three there. Yep, sweet. Um, the Courser could go up to four, but I don't know if we actually need all that. 
and the Wind Mage is probably one of the worst cards in the deck that can be replaced. Doesn't play well with a lot of things. We used it while we could. Departed Deckhand, however, some, it's unblockable. We can't Curious Obsess it, but it's still pretty solid. It gets that damage through. That's what it's all about, my friends. Exclusion Mages, those I think can make the cut when all's said and done. Dreamcaller Siren's an interesting one, and if we have enough pirates, I mean, we have kind of a wizard's theme, but we could also have a little pirate theme. Dreamcaller Siren can steal games as a big old flash flyer that taps things down. Hopefully we can just show that happening a time or two. I thought about Siren Reaver. We'll keep thinking about Siren's Reaver. Siren Reaver. Reaver of Sirens. Um, so we don't need Mystic Archaeologist, or Radical Idea, or Diamond Mare, or even Wind Mage, or Water Knot. Um, we do need more Retorts. So that is another thing that we'll probably craft tomorrow. Having those counter spells makes a big difference. We probably have too many of these three drops, so I think I will. Um, I think I will cut the Coursers and the Siren and kill the Pirate theme. We're at 20 creatures, so cutting one more creature wouldn't be too bad. So what are the creatures we don't need? Suppose the deckhands. We can cut down to one, one deckhand. The spell pierce didn't really hold a lot of weight today, but we don't have enough counter spells yet, I think, to replace it. But we did just add two exclusion mages, which sort of take a spot from blink of an eye. So I think I'll go to one blink of an eye instead, and we'll keep some the, all the more departed deckhands around since they die easier. I like about 20 creatures in the deck, but the part of the gist is that you can protect them, and you can't put a dive down on your deck hand. It just dies as soon as something targets it. All right. Um, so as we move to tomorrow, we have one pack of Ravnica, one pack of Core. We have about 4,000 gold. We have a quest that we can probably finish. Tomorrow is crafting days when we buy some packs and uh, start making some decks. So make sure to come back tomorrow. Thank you for watching The Adventures of Young CGB. Brought to you by all the folks at Patreon who helped us reach our stretch goal to make one of these available every day of the week so that you can have the finest free-to-play experience in Magic Arena. I will see you in the next video.